Hey guys, welcome to Habits and Humor. I'm Susie B, your personal trainer, your habits coach, and the person who brings you a good laugh and a good story that helps you to learn something from it and gives you the actionable steps to use it in your life. Today's story is comes from back when I was 18 or 19 years old, and I was a very impressionable person at this time. One day I found myself in an event with a couple of friends and someone approached me and said to me, I want you to come and meet with our agency because we are looking for models. And as an 18, 19 year old girl, you think, oh, you know, this is awesome. So I happened to be taking an acting class at a school in um, Salt Lake City, Utah, and the modeling agency happened to be affiliated with this acting class. And so I, when I found out what the company was, I decided to go check it out and just see. So I went in there and I'd never looked into this thing before into modeling or anything like that. And it wasn't high on my list of things that I wanted to do, but I thought, let's keep our options open and see what this person has to say. So I go into the office and I sit down and she's looking at me from across the table and we're talking for a moment and she looks right at me and she goes, well, there's two parts of what we offer here to our models and what we, um, our, we find business for you to do. One is runway fashion shows. And this, I feel like you would be a good candidate for. The other is catalog and print. And that's where you get your photos taken for, you know, advertisements or whatever. And she looks at me and she goes, you could do runway, but you could not be successful in catalog or print. And I was just like, okay. And she looks at me right in the eyes and she goes, you couldn't be successful in catalog, print, or anything up close because your nose is too long. <laughs> this woman is sitting across the table from me. I'm 18 years old. And she tells me I can't be successful because I have a big nose. Oh my gosh, you guys, this was crazy. I just, I think of this conversation often and I just shake my head. First thing that I want you to learn from this, from this funny story is this woman, <laughs> oh my heavens, it depended on the intent of what she was going for, but she was brutally honest with me. And there's two ways that I can look at this. One is that she was trying to help me to realize something that I couldn't see myself. Maybe she really, really knew that there is no way that anyone would want to photograph my face because of my big nose. <laughs> or two, she was just saying something that was her opinion that happened to come out of her head and head in my direction. So one, either she was trying to help or two, she was just saying something that she, what, that she was thinking. She was sharing her opinion. All right. So let's go back to the first point. If you feel like you have something to offer somebody that will help them to see something they cannot see, sometimes that's a difficult message to receive, but it needs to be said. Sometimes there is some corrections that need to be made. This happens often in parenting. Sometimes your kids are doing something that is harmful to them and you have to stand up to them and tell them, hey, you're doing something dumb and you need to stop. <laughs> Those kind of conversations need to be had. Perhaps this is what this woman thought she was doing. Hey, this is not the industry for you. You should go a different direction. Maybe she was just looking out for me. Or maybe she was just doing the second option where she was having an opinion and she decided to share it. This is something that I think is so prevalent right now. And uh, how do I phrase this? We need to be careful with how we share our opinions. If your opinion is, there's an acronym on the wall in my kids' elementary school, and it says t, uh, the word think. If it's T, thoughtful, H, helpful, I, inspiring, N, um, now I can't think of what the N is, and K, um, kind. If it is not any of those things, now I can't think of what the N is. That's going to drive me nuts. What's the N stand for? Anyway, um, if it's not one of those things, then, oh, necessary. That's the N. So thoughtful, helpful, inspiring, necessary, or kind. So in this cir circumstance, perhaps it was necessary. Maybe she needed to tell me this so that I could be prepared for what the industry standard was. Perhaps this happens when you are coaching someone, if you're helping them with their business or you're helping them with their family or their finances or their physical health. Oftentimes I have to tell people something they don't want to hear necessarily in order to help them get to the next level, to push themselves to the next point so that they can succeed. Be careful with what, which of these things you are doing. Are you sharing something in order to help the person? Or are you sharing something because it's in your mind and you want to share it? 
if it is your opinion, you are totally entitled to having your opinions. That is absolutely your right, your privilege, and you should have that. I am not arguing against you having your own opinions about anything and everything. I am encouraging you to please consider what you say before you say it. I was 18 years old. This was 15 years ago that this happened. And I still vividly remember this conversation because this woman had the audacity to tell me something that perhaps it was in a way, in an intent to help me to understand, or perhaps it was just an observation that she had that she decided to share with me. And it's something I'll never forget. You guys have been there. You've experienced something or someone who told you once something that was hurtful to you or that was life-changing for you. And you'll never forget that. Be cautious with how you share your opinions with people and make sure you go through that acronym. Is it thoughtful? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? And is it kind? If it covers one of those or all of those, go ahead and share it because absolutely we can help each other. Sometimes outside people can see into some things that we're going through. They can give us some inspiration and some insight into something we cannot see. Sometimes when you're down on the ground, you need that aerial view. So there is a place to encourage other people to help you. Absolutely be open to receiving some insight and some input from other people. However, there is a caveat here. Be uh, filter that information that comes in through you, into you. Use your God-given filter to process that information and decide what is for you and what is not. I often compare this process to grocery shopping. If you go into a grocery store, there are literally millions of options for you to choose from. Go in there and choose what feels right to you, what you need, what you want, and take it home with you. Give it a try. Perhaps there's some new things in there that you've never tried before. Try them once and see how it goes. If you end up loving it, awesome. When you go back, you can get more of that thing. However, if you try it and it doesn't go well, if it's not something you love, something you need, or something you want, then when you go back to the store, you have this incredible gift, this incredible ability to choose to not take it with you. You get to decide what becomes yours and what stays on those shelves for somebody else. This is very applicable to every aspect of our lives. People have so much input on everything that we all do. We all have opinions and we all have input on how people should be living their lives, running their businesses, exercising, eating, all of the things. But I encourage you once again to realize what position you are in when you're sharing that information. If someone has come to you and asked you for advice and you tell them this is the only way you must do it this way or you cannot succeed, that's a risky position to be in. However, if you tell that person, hey, this is what worked for me, try it and see how it goes and then personalize it to what works for you. That is a far better way to do things. This is often what I do with my personal training clients. I'll give them a workout and then I'll take the feedback and ask them, hey, how did that go? What worked? What didn't? What did you love? What did you hate? And let's adjust things so that you can enjoy your workouts, motivate yourself to want to do this stuff and so that you can succeed and get the results that you want. You can absolutely personalize whatever the thing is that you're trying to get help on. So first of all, be careful what you say and who you say it to and why you say it. Second of all, look for other people who have that input into and that insight into something that you might need help with. And then third, use your fantastic filter to decide what's for you and what is just noise. What is your filter? <laughs> there is something inside you that will help you to filter all of that other stuff out, all of the noise, and help you to decide what is most important. That filter is your self-belief. So this time during this story, I went through this whole thing and this woman told me I couldn't succeed in this area. And so I walked out and I never turned back. I never looked back. There wasn't, there was no indicator to me at this point that this was something that I really wanted, something I really needed in my life. And so I took that and I just went with it and I didn't fight it and I didn't feel wrong about it. It didn't feel like I was missing out on something. And so that was okay. In that particular circumstance or situation, I didn't need 
to, you know, believe in myself and, and to remember this is really what I want to do and ignore that noise. That was a filter that I chose to follow and it has served me just fine. I'll give you a couple of examples of other people who have been given input and they decided to use their self-belief filter. Michael Jordan, he was cut from his high school basketball team. His high school basketball coach cut him from the team and told him he wasn't good enough to play. Do you know what he did with that information? Did he stop playing basketball and never look back? Or did he take that information, learn a lesson from it, believe in himself and know this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I want to do. I'm going to do it anyway. There are so many people in our lives who accidentally or on purpose are going to try to tell us that we can't succeed at something and that we shouldn't try again. But if you know, if you know and believe in your heart that that thing is for you, nobody else's input matters. That is your own magical filter. It's your self-belief. If you know in your heart something is for you and you really, really want it, it doesn't matter what anybody else has to say about it. You keep going. For example, when I started a business, I had no business starting a business. <laughs> I started a business simply because I didn't like where I was working. I didn't like the requirements that I had to sell products and push supplements and things like that at the gym that I worked at. I hated that. I knew my clients didn't need these things, but in order to keep my job, I had to sell those things. So I decided to quit my job at the gym and I started my own personal training business. At that time, I had no knowledge about how to start a business. I had no knowledge about how to run a business or any access to having a business. I started it from my home and I had no business doing business. We'll put it that way. But I knew my clients and I knew these people needed something. And so there were many, many times that I was told, either told or I just thought in my own mind, I can't do this. I don't know what I'm doing. This isn't for me. I'm not supposed to do this thing. But I kept trying and I kept going back to that grocery store and picking up different groceries, trying new things, trying new things until I found what worked. And I found that training my friends worked really, really well. So I started training my friends and I, I worked from home and I did this for several years. And then I moved into a different state and I left those friends and those clients behind. And that made me sad. And I knew there was a better way to work with people, no matter what their location was. So I started an online business. Again, I had no business starting a business online. I had no clue what I was doing. And I just jumped in and started trying things. I went back to that grocery store and picked up some foreign groceries. <laughs> started this business, started going online, and I learned how to help people in any location. And this was so exciting for me. Were there many, many, many barriers that came up? Yeah, you bet. It took me forever before I even made any money. <laughs> it took me forever before I made any progress. But I knew that I was doing something that mattered, both to my clients and to me. I was fulfilling a passion of mine and following a dream, no matter what anybody else had to say. There were many times that both my own mind and input from people around that just said, hey, you know what, if this isn't working, it's probably easier if you just let it go. That is true. It probably would have been easier, but it didn't matter to me. I wasn't looking for something easy. I was looking for a way to help people improve their health. And I was going to do whatever I had to do to make that happen. It's the same for you. If you use your filter, which is your self-belief, your belief in yourself to filter out all the other information that comes in, whether it's coming from your own mind or anywhere else, Filter that information through the lens of self-belief and ask a couple of questions to yourself. Is this something I really, really want? And why is this a barrier? Why did this thing come up? Why did this person tell me this or this you know, barrier come up? Is it because I need to move in a different direction or is it because this really isn't right for me? Again, you're going to lean on yourself. You're going to lean on your own intuition, your filter, your self-belief, whatever your guidance system is. Lean on that. Listen to that and let it guide you. So now that you've decided, yeah, this is for me. This is absolutely something I want to do. Never let anyone take that power from you. 
Never let anyone take that power from you. Your self-belief gives you 100% power to keep doing the thing, whatever the thing is that you are trying to do. Perhaps it's just losing weight. Maybe it's getting healthier and people around you are saying, hey, you're just going to gain it back. Or maybe you tried a certain, um, I don't know, diet or something like that. And it didn't work. And, and it was something that you did gain the weight back, the weight back, or maybe there you tried a certain method and you couldn't stick with it. It's the same thing with my nose. Just because one thing is off doesn't mean it's not for you. Oftentimes I have clients that come to me and say, oh, I hate exercising because I don't like to run. I'm like, oh my word, there are so many other options. You do not have to like to run in order to be fit. I promise there's other choices you can make. Know yourself. Use that self-belief filter to filter out the noise and watch as you continually succeed. I'll give you some more examples of people who filtered out the noise, continued on the path that they knew they were supposed to do and made such an incredible difference. Martin Luther King Jr. Talk about somebody who had to filter out the noise. This guy was crazy ridiculed for what he was standing up for. He spoke out and was talking about equality and he wanted to share this message with people and he was ridiculed and berated and imprisoned for it and eventually it actually was the reason that he was killed but he was willing to keep going because he believed in himself he knew what he was doing was the right thing he knew what he was doing mattered and was making a difference and boy are we all so grateful for the work that guy did him and the other people that he was associated with what a phenomenal change to the world that absolutely needed to happen we will all be forever grateful that he used his filter and didn't quit when other people told him he should quit another person like i said back to that michael uh, michael jordan story he was cut somebody came in and told him hey you should be done with this but he didn't listen he believed in himself and he kept going and he pushed himself harder And he took that sport by storm. Like he completely, I mean, he's one of the greatest basketball players ever, arguably maybe the greatest, but you'll, I'm not going to have that discussion with you right here, right now. (laughs) Another person that I want to share with you is Oprah Winfrey. She had a desire to be a journalist and to be in the entertainment industry. It took her many years and much rejection before she even got her first job. She got turned down by all sorts of places when she wanted to be a journalist, when she wanted to be a writer, all of those things. They all kept turning her down. So she finally got a job at a television station in Baltimore. And then she was promptly fired from that job. (laughs) So talk about having to have that internal discussion with her filter. Is this hard because it's not for me? Or is this hard and I should just keep going? Is this hard because other people have opinions that don't matter? And I should, those are just noise. She was so good at filtering through that noise and deciding what was still for her. She knew exactly what she wanted. And boy, did she absolutely follow that. She's a massive industry, I mean, mogul, the queen of entertainment. She is one of the greats in her space because she did not give up. You can do the same thing, whatever it is that you're working on. Listen and take the input around you and consider it. Take it through that filter of your own self-belief and your own self-understanding and decide what is for you and what is not. Take the groceries home with you or leave them on the shelf. You don't have to take it just because somebody offers it to you. Take what is for you and leave the rest on the shelf. And then keep going. Again, it does not matter if someone else believes in you. If you believe in yourself and you believe in yourself so hard, eventually they will see the vision too and they'll get on board. But that's on them. That is not up to you. If someone else believes in you or not, is not your decision. Your decision is to decide if their input is valuable to you, is useful to you, is helpful to you, is kind or necessary to you. And if it's not, filter it out. It's just noise. Go back to your own compass, your own internal direction and listen to what you want and need. Believe in yourself so hard that no matter what anybody else says or does, it doesn't affect you. Keep going. Eventually, you'll start to garner support from people who 
do get it. And that support is valuable and helpful, but it's truly not necessary. If you believe in yourself so hard, the other people's input is just icing on the cake. You, my friend, are the cake. <laughs> believe in yourself so much that no matter what anybody else's input is, it can go through your filter system of your own self-belief and you can decide what is for you and what is not. And then chase that dream down because your dreams are yours. And if they are something that you truly want for yourself, ask yourself why you want it. Ask yourself what you're willing to do to get it. And then do those things. Believe in yourself because that is the key to filtering out the noise and the key to being successful in whatever the thing is that you are wanting to do. Maybe this is physical health. Maybe this is improving your mental health. Maybe this is writing a book, starting a business, being a better parent, being a better friend. Any area of your life that you want to improve or change, listen to that self-belief, that self-intuition, and listen to who you are. If it aligns with who you are, and if it feels like it's right for you, then keep going with it, no matter what the noise around you is. That's my message for you today. And uh, the three habits I want you to take away from today's discussion are first, talk to yourself. <laughs> One of my very favorite ways to talk to myself is journaling. I often journal through these kind of conversations so that I can tell, is this hard because it's new? Is this hard because it's scary? Or is this hard because it's not right for me? And do I need to go in a different direction? The second habit is to invite other people to help you. And then the third habit is to decide whether that help is what you need or if it's going to stay on the shelf. Those are your three habits. And I sincerely hope that you guys got some value out of this and that you understand you were born with this filter. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to go out and buy some product to be able to tell what's right for you. Listen to yourself. Know what you want. Go through the process of becoming connected to who you are. If that's a struggle for you, reach out to me. I've been through that process. And I know how to help you do it. But please, please, please understand if it's something that you truly want, you can have it. You should have it. And the only thing you need in order to get it is to keep going. Keep believing in yourself so hard that nobody else can say anything. And if they do, it's just noise.